You unlock this door with the key of imagination. Beyond it is another dimension, a dimension of sound, a dimension of sight, a dimension of mind. You're moving into a land of both shadow and substance, of things and ideas. You've just crossed over into the Twilight Zone. Where would I find the thimbles? Well, you'll have to ask Mr. Armbruster, the floor manager, over there, the... The man with the flower in his lapel. Thank you. Hey, watch where you're going. Excuse me. I'm in line here. I, I know. I, I just have to... Sir? Yes? I'm looking for the thimbles. The, the symbols? <laughs> no, you know, the for sewing. The pretty little gold ones. Well, that would be in gifts. Oh, thank you. Uh, uh, which floor? Is this dress on sale? Yes, madam. Oh, good. Can you help me? The sales girl will ring it up for you. I is gifts... Mr. Armbruster to cosmetics. I'm sorry. What did you say? Is it upstairs or Mr. down? Mr. Armbruster, please come to the cosmetics counter. Uh, one moment. I'm needed. Is this the final markdown? Uh, let's see. Uh, yes. 40% off. I'll take it. Will that be cash? Charge. Oh, and can you gift wrap it for me? Well, certainly, ma'am. The customer service is downstairs. You take the elevator on your right. Would you push the button for me? What? The button. My arms are full. Oh, I'm sorry. I I'll get it for you. Is this elevator going down? I I'm really not sure. <sighs> Such crowds. I know. Uh, it is hard to tell whether you're coming or going. Oh, it's always like that this time of year. Uh, I should have stayed home. It's exciting, though, don't you think? All the colors, the displays. It makes you feel so alive. Uh, I suppose. Going up? Actually, no. I'm looking for customer service. Next elevator, ma'am. Going up. Oh, wait. Yes? Is the gift department upstairs? That would be the mezzanine, miss. Then I'd better get on. Yeah, good luck. I hope you find what you're looking for. So do I. What about all those people? Beg pardon? I'm the only person on this elevator. Miss? Why didn't you let them on, too? This is the express. The others are local this time of day. Oh. <laughs> I guess I'm not accustomed to such personalized service. <laughs> My own private elevator. <laughs> A pleasure. I hope it's in gifts. What in particular were you looking for? Thimbles. Thimbles? Gold thimbles. Really? You had them advertised. And they would most likely be in specialties. They would? Ninth floor. Oh. Somebody told me to look in gifts. Ninth floor. Thank you so much. Wait, there, there must be some mistake. No one's on this floor. I don't even see a salesperson. Wait! Express elevator to the ninth floor carrying Miss Marsha White on a most prosaic, ordinary, run-of-the-mill errand to the specialties department looking for a gold thimble. The odds are that she'll find it. But there are even better odds that you'll find something else, too. Because this isn't just a department store. This happens to be the Twilight Zone. And now, the Twilight Zone and our story, After Hours, starring Kim Fields with Stacy Keach as your narrator. Wait, you can't leave me here. There's nothing on this floor, only empty counters, almost no lights at all. Oh, I want this button to work. Now I have to wait till he comes back. Rude, that's what I call it. Hello? Is anyone here? Anyone at all? May I help you? Oh. Is there anything the matter? Where did you come from? Come? From? I, I didn't see you behind the counter. Was someone helping you? No. How could they? 
I don't think I'm on the right floor. In fact, I'm sure I'm not. You see... Can I show you anything? Why, yes. If you are open, that is. And what would that be? Well, actually, I was looking for a gold thimble. Really? Mm -hmm. It's a gift from my mother. I see. Gold thimble. Gold thimble. Oh, yes. I think we have just the thing. You do? Something you'll like. In fact, I'm sure you will. But where? I don't even see any merchandise. Down here. At the end of this counter. This way, please. Oh, I see it now. There. How about this? It's all by itself in a glass case? Well, that does make it stand out very dramatic. And in its very own little velvet box. That's lovely. Don't you adore it? May I see? It's 14 karat gold. Really? Quite distinctive, don't you think? Do you have any others? Only this one. But why look any further if this is the one you like? You do like it, don't you? Yes, it's perfect. How did you know? Let me write it up for you. Charge? What? Will this be a charge? Oh, no, no. I'll be paying for it in cash. As you wish. It's easier that way, at least for me. Applying for credit, waiting to be approved. I never have enough time to go through all that. Do you know what I mean? I know exactly what you mean. Do you want it gift wrapped? Yes, please. If you have the time. Mm, on second thought, I'd better wrap it myself. Of course. It seems that there's never enough time, is there? Mm -hmm. Oh, I forgot to ask. How much is it? Twenty-two eighty plus tax. Is that all? Quite reasonable. It's our annual markdown sale for preferred customers. How nice. Twenty-five dollars even. Here you are. Perfect. You know, this is so... What? So... Odd. In what way, Marsha? Well, you don't have any merchandise here in any of the displays except for this thimble. Except for the very thing I needed. Is that so odd? We pride ourselves on catering to the discriminating shopper. I'm not sure. The whole floor looks so empty. And all the cases... You called me Marsha. Did I? I'm sorry. That was forward of me... I should apologize. How did you know my name? Aren't you a regular? I've probably seen you around the store. No, you haven't. I've never been to this department before, and I certainly have never seen you. Are you sure? Look, I don't want to make a big thing out of this, but... Really, what kind of place is this? What do you mean? I mean, I go shopping, and I want just one small item, a gold thimble. And I end up in this store on a floor where there isn't anything in evidence except the item I'm looking for. Now, you may be more sophisticated than I am. Not at all. But I'd call that odd. Here's your purchase. Well, don't you? Please come again. Anytime. The elevator's... But, of course, you remember where it is. Yes. Yes, I, I, I do. Thank you. Why won't I come? Oh, Miss White. What did you say? I was wondering. What? Are you happy? Am I happy? You'll have to forgive me, but it's really none of your business. Is that so? Why are you smirking? Was I? You are. You're laughing at me. I didn't intend to. Is this all a practical joke, one that no one's bothered to let me in on? Not at all. Then explain why you know my first and last name. I didn't give you a credit card or show you my ID. As I say, we must have met before, somewhere. And where would that be? I'm sure I don't remember. And why the personal questions? Am I happy? What does that mean? I was making conversation. But what business is it of yours? What possible interest could my life hold for you? Very well, Miss White. Suit yourself. It's none of my business, then, as you say. I believe your elevator's here. Going down. She 
think was so funny? Pardon? Nothing. Did you find what you were looking for? As a matter of fact, I did. Excellent. Also, as a matter of fact, it was the only thing for sale on that floor. You don't say. Somebody ought to hire an efficiency expert or something. Oh, dear. One entire floor devoted to the sale of a single gold thimble. And an extremely odd sales lady. Somebody ought to look into her while they're at it. Odd, you say? You don't believe me? See for yourself. A very nice choice. Wait, this is scratched. I didn't notice. I can't send this to my mother. It's scratched terribly and dented, too. You see here? Main floor. Just look at this thing. It's scratched and it looks like somebody stepped on it. Main floor. Sit down, Mr. Armbruster. You make me nervous. But I'm only trying to explain. Can't we cut through all this? You're in charge of the floor. You're supposed to handle any problems. I have a department store to run here. I know that, Mr. Sloan, sir. I distinctly told her that... What's I... your point? Uh, that all the gold thimbles we have would be in gifts. And that if the item is in its original packaging, we would make good on it, either by replacement or refund. I distinctly told her that, Mr. Sloan. Then what's the problem, Mr. Armbruster? The problem is that the customer claims she didn't get the item in gifts. She got it in another department. Then have her go to the department where she purchased the item. You know the policy. Oh, that's the point, Mr. Sloan. She has some idiotic story about having purchased the gold thimble on the ninth floor. Ninth. That's what she said over and over again. I trust you explained to her, Mr. Armbruster, that this store doesn't have a ninth floor? I tried, sir. Lord knows I tried. Mr. Sloan, believe me, I have tried desperately, and I really mean desperately, to acquaint her with that fact. But she insists she was taken up to the ninth floor, waited on by a rather odd woman. An odd woman, no less. A personality trait she would be particularly knowledgeable about. Well, at any rate, a woman who allegedly waited on her... Never and... mind, Mr. Armbruster. I'll talk to her. Thank you, sir. She's right outside. Miss White. Oh, there you are. This is Mr. Sloan. How do you do? He is the manager of the entire store. Hello. Perhaps I can help you, Miss White. I hope so. I'll do my best. It's about this thimble. Let's have a look at it, shall we? It's dented. Oh, my. And scratched. See here? Well, now it most assuredly is. If you'll simply take it back to any register in the gift department, we'll be happy to replace it with merchandise of equal value or issue a credit. If that's all... Mr. Sloan, I've already explained to your Mr. Armbruster here. I didn't purchase this in the gift department. Where, then? Now it begins... I was taken up to the ninth floor. Taken? If I may interrupt you right there. That's what's so difficult to understand, Miss White. What is? You see, we don't have a ninth floor. But that's ridiculous. As long as I've been with the store, which, by the way, is a considerable number of years... A considerable number. Well, I know what I know, Mr. Sloan. There's an old saying, those who were there know more than those who weren't. And I was taken up to the ninth floor, definitely. There's no question in my mind. I saw the numbers flash by, and then the elevator operator opened the door. Taken by whom? The express operator. And after that, he took me down again to this floor. Express, did you say? Yes, the express elevator. And I was waited on by a very odd woman. Is your receipt in your bag? My receipt? I didn't get a receipt. You see? I paid cash. I gave the woman a $20 bill and a $5 bill. Then I was given the thimble in this little velvet box here. Mm, it doesn't look like one of ours. Then I took the bag and... From the odd woman. She was odd. Anyone would say so. Can you be more specific? She had a very chic, tailored suit with her hair tied back tightly in a sort of bun. She seemed to know exactly what she was doing, so I'm sure she's also been with your company for a considerable number of years. And her name was? 
I don't know. You see? I didn't ask. All our employees are required to wear name badges, like Mr. Armbruster here. So all you'd have to do is glance at the lapel... Voila! ...and there's the name. I honestly don't think she had one. No, I'm sure. Just the tailored suit with a plain neckline, no jewelry. If you could give me something more to go on... I'm trying. Otherwise, without a proper receipt, I'm afraid... Like that woman. Which? She, she looked exactly like that woman over there. Where? Standing by the designer collections. The same outfit, same color. That's one of our newest designer suits. It hasn't even been put in the window yet. How did she... Wait. Yes? It not only looks like her, it is her. It is? The woman. The one who waited on me. She's standing right there. See her? Well, <clears throat> this will settle it then. Yes, it most certainly will. Miss, I wonder if you'd mind... She can't hear you. Mr. Armbruster, would you kindly ask her to come over here? With pleasure. Excuse me. Sorry. If you'll kindly step aside, I have to... You? Do you work here? I said... May we have a word with you, madam? This customer says she purchased a gift item from you earlier today. She refuses to answer. If you'll face me, please. My name is Sloan, and I'm the manager of this store. Where is your ID badge? I told you, she won't answer. She is not from any of my departments. My salespeople are all trained to be courteous, responsive. Are you deaf? Turn around and let me see your name. Oh, no! You still say this is the one who waited on you, Miss White? What in the world? What's the matter with you, Armbruster? Leading me on a wild goose chase. This is a mannequin. No! I could have sworn... Uh, of course it is. I knew that all along. A small jest, sir. A very small one. Only a mannequin, dressed for display in ladies' couture. Why, what do you say now, Miss White? A dummy! Not a sales girl at all. A mere dummy. I'm Brewster. What are you doing in ladies' lingerie? Sir, I'm waiting to see if our favorite customer, alleged customer... Miss White? You mean she's still here? In the ladies' lounge. I thought I told you to show her the door. She didn't feel well. She wanted to lie down. I thought it best to accommodate her. You never know about these crazies. Lawsuits, insurance claims... Oh, planes. all right. Let her rest. But send someone in to see how she's doing. It's almost six o'clock. Yes, sir. Miss Keever? Yes. Well? M Mr. Armbruster? Well, how is she? Oh, Miss White. She'll be all right, Mr. Armbruster. She was feeling a bit faint. That's all. Uh, but what about this, uh, this delusion of hers? Delusion? Uh, I really don't know, sir. We didn't talk much. Well, go in and talk to her now. I think she may have gone to sleep on the couch. Wake her up, then. Get her on her feet. We'll be closed in a few minutes, and I want her out of here. Post haste. Oh, I'll see what I can do. As soon as I ring up the sale, I... Now, Miss Keever. Yes, sir. Tell her we're closing. She can come back tomorrow and we'll get her a replacement on her merchandise or a refund or, or anything she wants. I'll tell her, sir. What I'd like to give her is a bus ticket to any department store west of Cleveland. Preferably one in Chicago, Los Angeles, or Honolulu. Miss Keever, did you hear me? Closing time. Yes. May I come in? Oh, yes, of course. How are you feeling? Mm, better. I must have dozed off. Oh, that's all right. You looked like you needed it. Mr. Armbruster wants to know how you are. I feel like such a fool. He must think I'm insane. No, mm, he doesn't. He and that manager and everyone else. Nobody thought anything. You just had a bad shopping day. I see it all the time. You know, it's strange. I didn't, really. You had what I came for, but everything went wrong when I got on that express elevator and the operator suggested... Well, which elevator is that? Next to the regular ones. 
you know, across the aisle, along the wall? Well, I have to tell you, I worked here all year, and, and we don't have an express elevator. If we did, everyone would try to use it. Then I am out of my mind. Oh, it, it could have been the freight elevator, I suppose, except... Except what? Well, there's no operator on the freight elevator. And you're going to tell me there's no specialty department? <laughs> Where's that? You've never heard of the ninth floor either. Oh, I am sorry. They do have a floor just for storage, but I I've never been there. Look, why don't you just go home and forget all about this? Have you ever had one of those dreams where you just can't wake up? <laughs> Every day. Mr. Armbruster. Oh, no, I, I shouldn't have said anything. <laughs> go ahead. You've listened to all my troubles. Well, it's just that... Well, I don't mind the job. Decent hours, great benefits, paid vacation. But what? Is there something about the store? No, no, not exactly. There's something odd about it, isn't there? Oh, it's the way Mr. Armbruster treats us. Have you ever worked retail? Isn't that odd? Really odd. Oh, well, what is? Do you know... Do you know, right here, right now, at this moment, I'm not sure. I have this feeling that there are things I I can't remember, but I, I don't know what they are. <sighs> but of course I couldn't, then, could I? <laughs> it, it's only logical. Does that sound crazy? That you can't remember? Well, did you fall and hit your head? No, nothing like that. You were telling me about Arm Brewster. Oh, well, I don't think he sees us as human. Oh, not just me, any of us. The customers, too. We're objects. We stand at our stations or line up or whatever it is. But as far as he's concerned, we don't have feelings. We're lives. We're not real. Like the woman. The woman who sold me the thimble. Now, which one? That's just it. She wasn't a woman. Oh, listen to me. I think you're right. I, I'd better go home and, and get some rest. Well, can I call for a cab? It, it's no trouble. Don't bother. I'll walk. Is it very far? I don't think so. Well, what's your address? My address? Okay, I am off in a few minutes, and I have got my car. <laughs> oh, oh, that's not necessary, really. Uh, just let me stay here for a minute more. I'll put on my shoes. Peggy? Yes? You've got a customer waiting. Oh, okay, I'll be right there. Miss White, don't worry about Arm Brewster. You know what I think? In his mind, he's some kind of little king or something, and this is his castle. And we're all his prisoners, or at least as long as we're here. But a few more minutes, and I'm off the clock. Look at it this way. You're one of the lucky ones. I don't feel very lucky. Well, think about it. You can walk out of here any time you want to. But why can't I remember my own address? Why am I so tired? The store is now closing. All customers who wish to make a purchase, please go to the nearest register. Excuse me? Yes. Oh, hi. You feel better? A lot. <laughs> Thank you so much. And for the talk. Sure you can make it okay? Oh, I'm sure. I just wanted to ask you, which is the way out? I think I got turned around somewhere. Okay, now that way. See the elevator at the end of the aisle? Mm, I don't need an elevator. <laughs> just point me to the nearest exit. Well, you still have to take the elevator. Why? We're on the first floor, aren't we? No, not quite. The second. Oh. <laughs> I really am turned around. Well, everybody has to take the elevator. The escalator's not working. Oh, you could take the fire stairs, but they're kind of spooky. Oh, no, thank you. <laughs> the elevator's fine. Okay, then. I will see you next time.
<laughs> I honestly don't think there'll be a next time. Not in this store. Good luck to you. Well, you too. <laughs> this is the last call. The store is now closing. Mommy, come on. These elevators take so long. My feet hurt. It's these shoes. Got some slippers for my husband, a shirt for my nephew, and a new dress for myself. I splurged. Here comes the elevator. Watch your step. Please move all the way to the back of the elevator. Going down? Yes, yes I am. Have to wait for the next one. This one's full. Oh, all right. Going down. Yes, please. Step into the elevator. But why is it so dark? Did your light fixture burn out? Step in. Wait, aren't you the operator from the other elevator? All the way to the back. You are. I just saw you in the elevator on the right. How did you? I said, step in. I won't. It's completely dark. I can't even see the floor. That's because there is no elevator in this shaft. What? Going down now. Let go of me. Sleep again. Oh, what an awful, awful dream. Hello? Hello, is anybody there? Empty. Then the store must be closed. That means. Locked in. Please, someone, someone, anyone. There. You. Yes, you, Mr. Security Guard. Oh, please, over here. Look over here. Yes, here. I'm locked inside the store. He must have a key. Of course he does. Of course he does. Here he comes. He'll, he'll unlock the door and, and I'll go home just... Just go home and, and like the girl said, forget all about this. And... No, he can't see me with the lights off. Use your flashlight. He can't hear me. Come back, please. Please, oh, please. Can anyone help me? Anyone, anyone. Help me. Somebody, please, please. Help me! The window won't break. It won't, no matter what I do. Who, who's there? Where do I go? I'll hide. That's it. I'll, I'll, I'll hide. He, he won't find me. Whoever he is, where? Men's, men's department. Not that way. Toy department, yeah. Yes, that's a good place to hide. Behind these boxes. If I can, if I can squeeze, squeeze down. You're the express operator, aren't you? 
Sure you, sure you are. Remember me? You, you took me up to the ninth floor today, just a few hours ago. And now I'm locked in. I, I guess we both are. Do you know the way out of the... Hello? Can you hear me? I said I... Huh? You're not real either. You're a mannequin. You're fooling, Marsha. Come on, dear. Climb off it. You remember, Marsha? Do you know who you are? We do. We do. We do. A payphone. Yes. Where's my purse? I don't have any change. Help. Someone, please. In the real elevator. Please, please come. Hurry. Any floor, I don't care. Move, move. Five, six, seven, eight. No, not, not this one. Come back. What do you want from me? Well, Marcia, dear, you'll forgive an observation, but you're acting like a silly child. Who are you? Can't you see? Come into the light. You're, you're not real. You're not even the model for that mannequin in the women's department. You, you are the mannequin. That's all you ever were. Only? Are you sure? Take a good look. You know us. You're all dummies. Dressed up in department store clothes. What, what are you doing here? Come now, Marsha. Think. Concentrate. And why am I... Remember now? All of us will try and help you. We want to help you. We'll help you concentrate. Stay away. Remember now? Is it coming back to you? Stay away from me, I said. Come on, Marsha. You can do it. We know you can. We have faith in you. What? That's odd. Is it really, dear? I, I don't know, but suddenly I, I do seem to, to, to. Remember? She remembers. Of course she does. She couldn't forget us. She didn't. She didn't forget. We knew you'd be back. You did? We've been counting on it. Then I must be... Say it. One of you two. There. Was that so hard? No. Of course it wasn't. Why should it be? Yes, that's what I am. One of you, and this is my address, isn't it? It's where I live. Good girl. And it was my turn to... Go ahead. Say it. Your turn to leave us for a month. Becoming much clearer now, isn't it? You left us last month to live with the outsiders. But you were due back yesterday, and you didn't show up. And you know, Marsha, that's selfish, my dear. All of us wait our turn, and then when it comes, we simply do not overstay. It was my turn, starting last night. I'm one day delayed already. Of course. Of course. I'm sorry. I forgot. When you're on the outside, everything seems so... so normal. As if it will go on forever. As if... As if what, Marcia? As if we were... 
like the others, like the outsiders, like the real people. Well, my dear, no serious harm done. And now, I'll see you all in a month. Take care of yourselves. We will. Have a nice time. Enjoy yourself. See you in 30 days. Did you enjoy it, Marcia? What? Your turn. Oh, yes. Was it fun? Yes, ever so much. Ever so much fun. Tell us about it. Please. I want to know. Did you get to wear what you like? Eat and sleep? Have a normal life? Were they nice? What did you see? You don't have to talk anymore now. There'll be plenty of time later. Time to tell us all about it. But for now, welcome back, Marsha. Good morning, Miss Keever. Morning, sir. Ready to set a new sales record? Oh, yes, sir. Splendid. I see the very irritating Miss White finally made it out of the store. Well, I, I guess so, sir. I didn't see her go. Well, good riddance to her and her little golden thimbles. Excuse me? Yes? Where can I find, well... Speak up. Ladies' undergarments? Uh, right here. Uh, Miss Keever will help you. Are you Armbruster? Mr. Armbruster. And you are? Maintenance department. I got another dummy for you. Where do you want it? Uh, on the pedestal in the window. As soon as it's properly dressed, of course. Right. Hold on. Yeah? Is that a new model? Don't ask me. Hmm. For a moment there, she... It... That is, it reminded me of, well, it reminded me of someone. I right. Someone I believe I've seen in the store. I can almost place her. Oh, well, I'm sure it doesn't matter. I have much more important things on my mind. Setting her up over here, Mr. Ambrister. Marsha White, in her normal and natural state, a wooden lady with a painted face, who one month out of every year takes on the characteristics of someone as normal, as much flesh and blood as you and I. But it makes you wonder, doesn't it, just how normal are we? And who are the people we nod our heads to as we pass on the street? A rather provocative question to ask, particularly in the Twilight Zone. We'll be back to the Twilight Zone after these words. You are about to enter another dimension. A dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind. A journey into a wondrous land of imagination. Next stop, the Twilight Zone. Hi, this is Stacy Keach. I'd like to take a moment to tell you about our Twilight Zone website at twilightzoneradio.com. At twilightzoneradio.com, You'll find the latest information on these Twilight Zone radio dramas, including behind-the-scenes photographs, plus the newest product releases, trivia contests, ways to contact us, other Twilight Zone-related info and merchandise, plus links to other fascinating websites. So make your next stop TwilightZoneRadio.com. Visit TwilightZoneRadio.com to purchase these Twilight Zone radio dramas on cassette and CD, or call toll-free 1-866-989-ZONE. That's 1-866-989-9663. The After Hours, starring Kim Fields with Stacy Keach as your narrator, was written for The Twilight Zone by Rod Serling and adapted for radio by Dennis Etchison. Heard in the cast were Taylor Miller, Doug James, Rich Komenik, Turk Muller, Linda Ryder, Guy Burrell, Lynn Foley, Natalia Reed, Lauren Patton, and Irene Olson. To learn more about the Twilight Zone radio dramas and to obtain audio cassettes and CDs of these programs, visit our website at twilightzoneradio.com. The producers of the Twilight Zone wish to thank CBS Enterprises, Carol Serling, Dennis Etchison, Dick Brescia Associates, Claire Simon Casting, Terry Jennings, XM Satellite Radio, the American Forces Radio and Television Service, Sirius Satellite Radio, our sponsors and our radio affiliates for helping make this series possible. 
This copyrighted radio series is produced and directed by Carl Amari and Roger Wolski for Falcon Picture Group. Doug James speaking. <laughs>